Praise for the fellowship that here we find, the fellowship of heart and soul and mind. Praise for the bonds of love and brotherhood, bonds wrought by Thee who makest all things good. Greetings, Christian friends. On behalf of the St. Lucia Methodist Circuit, I am so happy to welcome all of you joining us for worship today. And so a hearty welcome is extended. If you are new here, we warmly welcome you into our family. Congratulations to all those celebrating a birthday, anniversary, or any other special occasion this week. May the abundance of the love of Christ fill all the days of your life. God bless you. To those who are going through a difficult period grieving the loss of a loved one, we offer our sincere condolences to you and pray that God's peace surround and support you during this period. We encourage your prayers in support of DILTS 23, the five-day seminar for youth and young adult leaders from July 24 to 28, under the theme Passion Purpose. Nomination of congregational officers members are invited to prayerfully engage, converse, and nominate persons to the various responsibilities in our different congregations. This includes congregational stewards, property stewards, care fund stewards, class leaders, and assistant class leaders. Kindly contact the office for nomination forms. Circuit Missionary will be held on Sunday, 30th July, 2023 at 4.30 p.m. Kindly reserve this date. The guest speaker would be Sir Dennis Byron with the theme, Spirituality and Justice. All members and friends of Methodist are invited. Our weekly Wednesday program continues with Zoom Prayer Room. 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Circuit Fasting continues from 6 a.m. to our meeting and midday service at the Castries Chapel from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. We invite you to join as you are able, to give and give and give again what God hath given thee, to spend thyself nor count the cost, to serve right gloriously, the God who gave all worlds that are and all that are to be. Your missionary offerings can be deposited to the Republic Bank St. Lucia or the church office during the week from 9 a.m. 3 me. We do appreciate your faithful giving. We acknowledge our preacher for today as Reverend Ann Yarden. We thank God for her and pray His blessings upon her as she continues in ministry. Do have a blessed week. Good morning, Christian friends. Those of us who are listening, those of you who are listening around St. Lucia, I bid you welcome. For those who are listening elsewhere in the diaspora, you are also welcome. Today, in St. Lucia, we celebrate Missionary Sunday. And you may ask, what is missionary? Missionary, remember, we are called to go on a mission. We were born for a purpose, and that purpose is to mission for Christ Jesus. And so as we celebrate this day, we want each and every one of you to take to heart that indeed God is calling you. In whatever form or fashion, God is calling you. So let us turn to our order of service and worship God as we respond to this morning's worship called to worship. The Spirit of God moves among us, binding us in covenant with faithful people of every time and place. The Spirit of God moves among, within us, empowering us to proclaim the gospel to all people. The Spirit moves through us, making us channels of God's love. Brothers and sisters, we continue as we go into our songs of worship by singing our first hymn, This Little Light of Mine, hymn number 483, I Will Let It Shine.
our next hymn, 184. We have heard a joyful sound.
Let us go to God in prayer. God of love and mercy, of all kindness and goodness, we come before you this day. You have called us unto yourself, and you have given us the responsibility to tell others of your love. So today, O oh God, as we adore you, we want to say how much we love you from the depths of our hearts. We want to say, O oh God, how much we worship you in spirit and in truth. We come, O oh God, to give you all the glory and the honor for all belongs to you. This day that you have made, you have given us the ability to rejoice in your presence. And so we pray, dear God, that as we rejoice, we will feel the liberty because you sent your only Son. Help us, O God, to proclaim your goodness. Even as we celebrate you this morning, may you empower us, O God, to only speak and to proclaim of your faithfulness to us. Father God, bind us with your cords, which will not be broken. And so, O oh God, as you have created us in your image and likeness, we trust you where we cannot trace you. As humankind, O oh God, we have failed. We know, dear God, that we have done things in ignorance. And so, if you love us, we come boldly before your throne because you said there is therefore now no condemnation. And so as we confess our sins one towards another, we ask for your forgiveness, creating us, O oh God, a heart to praise you, to worship you, and to glorify you. Loving God, we thank you. We thank you that we are in relationship with you. We thank you, O oh God, because you first love us. We thank you that you sent your son Jesus on Calvary. And so his spilt blood has delivered us. His spilt blood has washed us. His spilt blood has protected us. And here we are standing on your promise, the promise that will never fail. Receive our words, O oh God, of thanksgiving, of confession and adoration. And for those, O oh God, whom we don't know, who are listening to our voices, we pray, dear God, that you will give them a chance to recommit themselves to you. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us prayerfully read our collect for today, found on the screen or printed in our order of service. Together we pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people that in their vocation and ministry that they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we read Ezekiel chapter 3, reading from verses 16 to 21. Thus beginneth the reading, Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 16 to 21. At the end of the seventh day, the word of the Lord came to me, mortals, I have made you a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the, to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give them no warning or speak to warn the wicked from their wicked ways, in order to save their life, those wicked persons shall die for their iniquity, but their blood I will require of your hand. But if you warn the wicked, and they do not turn from their wickedness, or from their wicked way, they shall die from their iniquity. But you will have saved your life. Again, 
in the righteous, if the righteous turn from their righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before them, they shall die, because you have warned them. They shall die from their sins, and their righteous deeds that they have done shall not be remembered, but their blood I will require at your hand. If, however, you warn the righteous not to sin, and they do not sin, they shall surely live, because they, look, they took warnings, and you will have saved your life. Let us continue as we sing our hymn of preparation, hymn number 180, Rescue the Perishing. I break your word. Help, O oh God, as I proclaim your word that you will help me to die to self, so that your word will go boldness, O oh God, touching the hearts and lives of those who need you. Today, O oh God, your word is a warning to all of us listening, whether believers or non-believers, whether backsliders or those who have given their lives to Christ, this word is for all. And so may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Christ and our Redeemer. Amen. Verse 40, verses 18 in Ezekiel 3 gives us a stern warning. It says, if you refuse to warn the wicked when I want you to tell them, you are under penalty 
of death. Who are we as Christians? What is our purpose here and now on earth? You see, Ezekiel's role was to, was to be a spiritual watchman, warning the people of coming judgments. God told Ezekiel, he does not want the people to say they had not been warned. Today, you and I as Christians are responsible to tell others about God's judgment and his message of salvation. This message of salvation is not for some, but for all God's creation. If you and I refuse to tell our nation the message that Christ is coming and they must repent, God will judge us. Today, Missionary Sunday, and our theme for today, the call to mission, is a call to commitment. And I ask, who are we as Christians? What is our purpose here and now? Our purpose here and now is to commit our lives to Jesus Christ and to mission for his purpose here on earth. Mission is an important job. It's a job that someone is sent somewhere to do. Ezekiel, born in Judea, was preparing to be a priest in God's temple when the nation was at the brink of complete destruction. God then calls Ezekiel to tell the people to be aware. Chapter 2 tells us, he is sending him to the nation of Israel, to a nation rebelling against God. They kept on sinning against me until this very hour. It may be difficult, but obedience is better than sacrifice. There is no turning back, church, brothers and sisters, when you and I are called to mission. When you and I are called to go out into the highways and the byways, when you and I are called to correct some things that we are seeing right before our eyes, you see, there is no turning back. When the Spirit prompts you, you cannot resist or disobey. And so when you and I are called to be in God's army, one of the most important challenging battle in our lifetime we would ever fight is to fight for the souls of humankind. It's not a political fight or a military battle, but it's to save the souls of man, humankind that God has created. You see, the battle between God and the devil good and evil, heaven and hell, either loving God even to the point of contempt for self or contempt for self or loving self to the point of contempt for God. This is a fierce battle and this battle is happening within every human heart regardless of whether we realize it or not. This is a spiritual battle, and we need to prepare to show the choice each individual of faith must take. Here there are two commanders who stands on opposition battlefield, calling their soldiers to follow them, one for the world and one for God. The angry crowd presses in, their general sits on top of the chair, terrifying his angry men to charge forward. He charges his troop to scatter from the field, not omitting any province, any places, city, nor any person, and use their nets and chains to entice souls away from God, to live their lives in pleasure, to live their lives in earthly possession, 
to live their lives in the power that they have in their own physical and human hand and to live their lives of pride. You see, brothers and sisters, when the enemy comes, he calls anyone who make themselves available and he uses them to charge against God's elect. On the other hand of the battlefield stands another command in chief who looks over, is encouraged, is courageous servants ready to make sacrifice to serve the Lord, seeking the destruction and the despair being spread by the rival army. Jesus, the Lord of the world, chooses so many persons and sends them out through the world, spreading the sacred doctrine of repentance. You and I are called to mission because we have been called by God to spread wherever we go that true sacrifice that true sacrificial word, that word, that price which was paid by Jesus himself. He says, repent and believe. It is a call to mission to bring souls to Jesus' love. Jesus is calling people to give their whole lives to him for the kingdom of God and for the love of soul. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is calling us not to give a part of us, but to give of our whole lives. For we belong to God. Our purpose here on earth is to serve him with all our mind, all our soul, and all our strength. If there is no one willing to go out to them with the gospel, they will be swept away by the angry mob, the world, and the devil. Brothers and sisters, we are to go. We must be willing to go, no matter how testing and, and dark the, the world may be. We need to face the world because we are not standing alone. Jesus is our battle leader. Jesus will take us to the end. You see, church, you and I need to be committed. To be committed is to have an agreement or pledge to do something in the future. Yes, to be committed to Christ's call, you and I must respond in urgency like Ezekiel. The time is short. The question for you and I today, which camp will we serve? Brothers and sisters, our God is such a gentleman. He does not force himself on anyone. He gives us the choice. Will you commit to God's call? Will you serve God in his camp? Or will you serve the devil? You see, call to, come to mission, you must be committed. Because the, when the tire hits the road, it's going to be tough. And therefore, the commitment is where you will be in agreement to go to the ends of the earth to save those whom God has called you to. What then will you do? Where has the Holy Spirit been directing you when he has called you? Church, the time is now to reach the souls of our youth, to reach the souls of the unsaved, to reach the souls of the godly who persecute God's people by threats, by violence, and you name it, church, and all who have not yet surrendered to Jesus, you and I need to reach them. You and I need to reach them not only with the word in the word of God, but our lifestyle should be one in mission. When they see us, they would say, I would like to commit my life to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, you need to take action under God's direction. Our people, our generation are in pain. Our people, our world is suffering. They are confused. 
they are rebelling against their leaders, their worldly leaders. Therefore, we are called to bring the good news in such a time as this. Our world, our nation, our community, our youth, they need to hear God's word. If there is no time, the time is now. They need God in their lives. Our world and the world leaders are in dying need. They, in they are in disarray. They don't know God, and therefore they are confused. And our youth and young people are seeing the confusion. Can the blind lead the blind? They have no answer for the people. The people are like sheep without a shepherd. Therefore, we are responsible to take the message, helping this generation of souls to come to Jesus Christ. Church, people are suffering from all kinds of poverty, made be mater ma mater material poverty, slavery, psychosocial relationship, psychological problem, and the poverty of being unknown, unloved, and forgotten. Many of our people feel as though they are forgotten. No one cares about them, especially our youth. People feel unloved. Why? Because we sit behind the television, we do not want to come out to express our love one with another. Our older folks are locked in and there is no one visiting them. I want to say, brothers and sisters, no matter what we are going through, the poverty are there. And therefore, it is important for you and I to reach out for the world to know that there is a God who cares and who loves. There is a God who is still on the battlefield. There is a God who is calling us to go out. And he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You see, most important of all, there is a call of urgency. The call of urgency is a call of commitment to serve those in spiritual poverty. We need to bring this world to know Jesus Christ by our lifestyle, by the word, by the way we love them and care for them. The call is to reach the souls of those who do not know Christ, who have not yet surrendered their lives to him. The hymn says all to Jesus, I surrender. I want to say there is an opportunity for those who have not yet received Jesus Christ personally, they can surrender their all to him. He is not a God who would, commit, who would tell you that you have done so much. As you have done it, come to him, lay to him. He is ready to say, I will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Brothers and sisters, when we surrender, or when you have surrendered your lives to him, souls who may have never been to get to with Christ, he says, I will lead you. I will fill you. I will empower you. And so, church, here is an invitation for you, for me, and for all to mission for Christ. The battle is real. The battle is tough. Our nation, our people in the world are confused. Jesus invites us to participate in his mission. He invites us to humbly commit by saying, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. He invites us to this urgent action because as we delay, lives are being lost, lives are wandering away, and so he's saying we need to go out and reach. Like Ezekiel, he will fill us with the Holy Spirit. You and I cannot go out into the battlefield without the Holy Spirit. 
The Spirit of God empowers us when we call Him, when we surrender our all to Him, and He fills us, and He gives us that burden to carry. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and let the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone, and therefore that cross is for us to save souls. When the Spirit fills us, we ask, why are we filled? We are filled because people are dying physically and spiritually, and the Spirit is there to empower us, to enable us to reach out to them. Brothers and sisters, this battle is spiritual, and it's raging all around us as Christ and his army fights for the salvation of souls. You and I are called to be committed, to go therefore and speak in word, action, and deed. The call to mission is to participate, not to put one foot in and one foot out. It must be total commitment to tell, to evangelize, to bring the lost to Christ. You and I do not have to travel to preach. Not every person will travel to go on mission, but let our obedience to God touch the lives of others. In closing, church, brothers and sisters, listening friends, the cost is great. Luke 9, 23, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. To follow Jesus is a call to mission. To follow Jesus is to let go of some of the friends. To follow Jesus is to let go of some of the things we would have done and come to him. He is the savior of the world yesterday, today, and forever. It's a call to commitment in obedience. Would you commit to Jesus as you come to him? All to Jesus I surrender. We will suffer rejection and condemnation, church. We will suffer ridicule. We will suffer discouragement, disappointment, and much more for our faith in Christ. But I want to say, follow Jesus. That is your call. He is tugging at your heart right now. He is asking you to surrender. Like Ezekiel, stand up. Be filled with the Holy Spirit to go to the nation of St. Lucia, to go to the highways and the byways, find them wherever they are. The question for you and for me is, are we ready and willing to commit our life to the call to mission? Are we willing, willing and ready to give up some of the things we would have done or the things that continue to trouble us to say, why are you going? Where are you going? You have done so much. Our conscience begin to make us feel guilty. But I want to say when Christ calls you, no man stands in your way. Go, brothers and sisters. Be truly dedicated. Be truly devoted. Giving of your all. Reject interference. May God your priority and your choice refuse to compromise with the world, for God is calling you. To call to mission is a call to commitment in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we respond with the hymn, I have wandered far away from God, hymn number 176. I invite all of you who need to recommit themselves to Jesus Christ, who may have started the journey but has left off, who for some reason our family members have condemned us. They may have said, where are you going? Do you think you can live such a life? I want to say, come to the altar for God is calling you. There is another chance. Tomorrow may very well be too late for some of us. We may see each other now, but may not see them tomorrow. I ask you to come. 
And as the organ and play and the congregation sings, I want you to come with a broken and a contrite heart. I have wandered far away from God. Lord, I am coming home. Brothers and sisters, we thank God for those who have recommitted themselves to Jesus Christ. And so as they, you have recommitted yourself, we are now going to give of our offering and our tithes as a part of commitment to God. This is a time of missionary. And if we are going to continue the work, we need to give of our best. So as we go into our pockets, for those who are listening, you are free to send any amount of donation to the number that was printed on your screen. 
And so we give God thanks and praise for your giving. Give generously. And we are going to sing hymn number 268. I'm not ashamed to own my God. sisters, we stand and sing the closing hymn, hymn number 270, 270, light of the world, thy beam I bless. And as you go out, remember that you are the light, the light to mission for those souls who are wandering, the light in the action in which we put out, they are looking. And so we are the light of this world. We sing hymn number 270.
professing your goodness to God, remembering that you are a call to the mission, you are called to the battlefield. It is not going to be easy, but with God in everything, you can make it, along with the Holy Spirit's presence who is there to guide you. And so now as you go, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with you all. Amen.